I shall call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The pangs of death surround me, and the floods of ungodliness make me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surround me, the snares of death confront me. In my distress I called upon the Lord, and cried out to my God. And he heard my voice from his temple, and my cry came before him, even to his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils, and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet and he rode upon a cherub and flew. He flew upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies from the brightness before him. His thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered from heaven and the Most High uttered his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered the foe, lightnings in abundance, and he vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, the foundations of the world were uncovered. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils, he sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. God delivering David from Saul wasn't a time-space catastrophe. It didn't end human history. God wasn't literally beheld as a physical being riding clouds and angels, nor did God tear up the foundations of the world. This is Hebraic hyperbole, employed to convey a movement of God which we should be mindful of when we read the likes of for the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. And to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. It's crass literalism that has us miss the first century fulfilment of these things despite the insistence of Jesus and the, um, the apostles. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere so that we need not say anything. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. The gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. But watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues. You will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. In Matthew 25, the Son of Man is coming to earth, and with the invitation out, the message preached to the world, the kingdom stands established. Those who deny it are set outside, and those who accept it included into the new fellowship, the new assembly of God that takes over from the old temple that was destroyed to make way for it. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world.